watch and burn. Hey everyone. So tonight I want to discuss a very little known uh, Canadian made for TV nuclear war drama that was produced by HBO back in the mid 80s. And it's called Countdown to Looking Glass. Uh, the title, simply enough, is specifically referring to, I believe it's a, it's a Boeing, I think it's, what the hell, what's the plane that it's named after? Uh, Looking Glass is a Boeing EC-135, if memory serves. At least I'm pretty sure it's a Boeing EC-135C. And essentially what it is, is it's the Air Force's Strategic Air Command's Air Force One, essentially. It allows uh, the Air Force to do everything from the sky, or allows the Air Force to mirror everything that they can do on the ground in the air. So in the event of a nuclear catastrophe, once Looking Glass and Air Force One are both in the air, um, the United States can run, you know, the government as well as the country and uh, their, what's left of their defensive capabilities. I don't know what would be left at this point. By the time Looking Glass takes off, I think that's pretty much the beginning of the end. And I also know that technically now too, for the past several years, it is no longer being referred to as Looking Glass. It's being referred to as... I think it's an A B N C P. I think it's an Airborne National Command Post. I think that's what A B N C P stands for. It doesn't matter. All this technical shit. Who cares? So, anyways, yes, the movie is uh, about the sort of the beginning of a nuclear focused, a nuclear weapon focused World War III that jumps off between the United States and Russia as the result of a war in the Middle East that kicks off after the Russians sort of perceive the Americans to be the weakest they've ever been after a handful of countries in South America default on the loans that they had for the, that they owed money for. The, I mean, I can't talk tonight. Why can't I talk? They, uh, a few countries in South America, they formed what is referred to in the movie as a debtor's cartel and they default on a number of loans to the United States government, which causes three American banks to collapse, which causes complete and total financial and social chaos in the United States. And this prompts the Russians to sort of dig in deeper in Afghanistan, and this kicks off the end of the world, essentially. And the thing that I love about this is this movie is presented exactly how those of us... Um, at home, like people who have no connections to anybody political or, or in the media or any, no political connections, no media connections, we'd be at home glued to our TVs waiting for any updates. And that's essentially, that's exactly what this movie is. It's, uh, it takes place uh, at a news station. I, I believe it's called BVN, if memory serves. I think it's BVN. And the story is focused around uh, Dorian, Bob, Dorian and Bob, who are both newscasters who are based like in the States, as well as Mike, who is a reporter in the field. He is overseas. He is on the USS Nimitz when it's attacked and it's nuked at the end of the movie. So he's in the thick of it overseas while Bob and Dorian are the ones sort of holding it down on the, the domestic front. And that's what the movie is about. It's about their three um, stories and how they see, or how rather they're watching the world fall apart just like we are, except they're the ones responsible for broadcasting the news to the rest of us. And this movie just gets consistently worse and worse as days go on. Um, towards the end, there's a draft and all of the people that work at the, the station are worried because a lot of their sons are of draftable age and they know things are really getting serious when the United States is starting to conscript. You know that things are getting bad. And it just continues to get worse. They, with the banks collapsing, um, people are still able um, to buy drinks at the local bar where all the newscasters hang out because they're allowing, um, the bar is allowing the patrons to write IOUs, essentially, until the banks sort everything out, which at this point, or at least at that point in the movie, it does seem things could get better. 
but the movie concludes with Bob addressing the nation saying, we're about to go off the air and uh, you'll be, uh, every update you get from this point forward will be from the emergency broadcasting system and may God help us all. And then it shows Looking Glass or the ABNCP taking off and that's how the movie ends. So officially, we don't know if the bombs were launched and the bombs dropped, but with Looking Glass taking off, it's not a good sign. And I did like how open-ended this was. I liked how technically we didn't see any fallout or any destruction. So maybe the world cleaned itself up, but with the Russians nuking the Nimitz, I don't think there's really any turning back from that point. So the world probably ended. This movie, I will say, is the least depressing of all the nuclear war movies that I've seen throughout the course of my life. This is sort of like, this is like the fun one. This is, it's got a sense of bounce to it. You know what I mean? Like, because it's being told through the eyes of several newscasters, it, there's a little more of a relaxed slant to this whole movie. And it, it sort of like eases the blow like, unlike Threads and Testament in the day after, this movie, like I said, it, it, it makes the end of the world seem a little more palatable, I suppose. A little more palatable. Yeah, nuclear war is going to be at all edible. Yeah, fucking right. Just sign me up for a big old bowl of fucking radiation sickness, because that sounds like fun. But yeah, so this movie was absolutely amazing. It's not really known by anybody. It is on YouTube, and if I think about it, Whenever this gets uploaded, if I remember, I'll put a link to the movie that's on YouTube below. Or I won't, because I have no idea when this is going up. This is probably not going up to like sometime in 2025. So maybe not, whatever, who cares? So thank you so much for hanging out with me for a little over seven minutes while I discussed the little known Canadian made for TV nuclear war drama, Countdown to Looking Glass. If you liked this review, if you didn't mind me rambling essentially about nothing for seven minutes, don't forget to do something nice for somebody. And don't forget that you're amazing. And I appreciate all of you. Have a good night. I just wanted to say thank you for making it through the entire video. I really appreciate it. And I'm going to remind everyone one more time, even though I've probably already done this in the video that you just watched, to please click the like button as well as the subscribe button because it helps this channel grow. And thank you for hitting like and subscribe. And we will see you guys really soon.